Although adjacent alphabetically in lists of major automakers, Jaguar and Jeep are polar opposites, but that isn't keeping Jaguar from following in Jeep's footsteps. Jeep is a pioneer in minting money with overlapping crossover offerings, its Renegade, Compass, and Cherokee span less than 16 inches of overall length and are all available with the same 2.4-liter Tiger Shark 4-cylinder and each somehow pulls its weight on the sales charts without stealing too many customers from the others. As it wades into the crossover arena, Jaguar is taking note. The F-Pace, a name contrived from F as in type, that super sexy roadster, and Pace as in. Well, how much time do you have to delve into some heroically contrived marketing bullshit question mark launched just last year? and already it nearly matches the combined sales of every other Jaguar model. So, for its second SUV, Jaguar introduces the E-Pace, which is just over 13 inches shorter and also falls between the Range Rover Evoque and the Land Rover Discovery Sport, which means JLR is out crowding even Jeep. The biggest distinction between the F and the E, though, is the latter's front drive roots. Like the Evoque on which it's based, the E-Pace's chassis consists of struts up front and a multi-link rear suspension, with a turbocharged inline 4 hitch to ZF's 9-speed automatic transmission. European markets will get both front drive and diesel options, but US buyers will choose only between two strengths of gasoline for their standard all-wheel drive or an optional version dubbed Active Drive line that offers front and all-wheel drive functions. Forced 4s for this first encounter, we were limited to the uprated engine, producing 296 horsepower and 295 pounds to foot of torque. With output figures of 246 and 269, the entry-level engine promises to be capable of a fair, uh, pace as well. We're told the sole difference between the two engines is in how much turbo boost they swallow. But these being members of Jaguar's new Ingenium engine family, even the higher output 2.0 liter is far more civilized than the 4D co-boost derived unit that preceded it in the JLR portfolio. It's vastly more linear at partial throttle, and the 9-speed is calibrated here for quicker, smoother action than we've noted in recent encounters with this transmission in Land Rovers. We found few opportunities for full throttle acceleration on the narrow country lanes between London and Brighton, England. But with nearly 300 horsepower in a 4,200 pound wrapper, the E Pace should have no trouble keeping up with compatriots in the subcompact luxury segment. What we appreciated more on the narrow roads threading through pastoral southern England was the E Pace's compact footprint and nimble footwork. It rides quite well, even on the 20 inch wheels that were fitted to our example. The wide range of wheel options includes one set of 21s, which might make the E-Pace the smallest and lightest vehicle to offer wheels so big. But on the 20s, there's no crashing, and even big road disturbances are well damped and isolated. Extensive use of aluminum for suspension components keeps unsprung weight down, no doubt helping the ride stay calm. The steering is quick, linear, and pleasantly light. But we did find the brake pedal a touch too feathery and particularly difficult to modulate at low speeds. The E-Pace will reach US dealers early in 2018. Vehicles with the base engine start at $39,595. Those with the 296 horsepower 4 will be branded R Dynamic and start at $48,245 and vehicles purchased in the first year can be configured as first editions, which pile a bunch of exclusive color and trim options into a fully loaded 246 horse model for $54,545. Jaguar tells us that more than 90% of its early orders have come from customers new to the brand, while sales of the F-Pace, as well as the Land Rovers abutting the E-Pace in the lineup, are undiminished. That's what you call a Jeep thing.
Rob Stone, two damn phones, Babylon's came.